everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Josh and today by popular request we are doing a full in-depth owner's review on our 2023 GX 460. Now originally I was going to wait to do this video until we got closer to the six month mark, but so many of you out there have emailed and commented asking me to please do this video because I think a lot of you out there are trying to decide for yourselves whether you want to pull the trigger on one of these V8 GX 460s because as you probably know if you're watching this video this is the final year 2023 is the final model year to get one of these new from a dealer and so we really are I'd say down to the last maybe two to three months that you'll be able to get one new from a dealer out there. So that's what we're going to do today. As I do with all of these videos on screen here, you will see my six likes and my six dislikes. These will be chapters in the videos. So use the play bar. I think it's usually down here um, to skip around, jump around. If there's something that interests you and you want to jump right to it, you want to skip something or you want to repeat any of these chapters, you can do that using that um, toggle in the play bar. So Let's go ahead and dive right in. I've got my coffee as um, you'll actually come with me in the video to get this coffee. Um, let's go ahead and dive in. All right, guys, here we are out on the road for our very first like, and this has to be the thing I love most about this GX. And that is, of course, the way that this truck drives. And that is in no small part because of the beautiful one UR FE V8 engine under the hood. This kind of experience is what Lexus built their entire brand on a bank vault on wheels. This engine is so overbuilt and so under stress that it's just, you barely ever hear it working. And then of course, there's the overall refinement and just the driving nature of this truck because it is a, again, a bank vault on wheels and Lexus has gone to the ends of the earth to make this as refined as it possibly can be. I mean, you have, just the smoothest and most refined experience that you can ever imagine out on the road. You know, again, getting up to speed there off the line, it's just a whisper, again, from somewhere ahead of the windshield. And I think this is the thing that we're gonna lose when we go to the new 2024 GX and we go to that 3.4 liter twin turbo V6. If the experience of LX600 owners, the many LX600 owners who have written to me in comments and over email is any indication, we're going to lose a lot of the driving experience and that silky and smooth and ultra quiet and ultra refined feel that we get in this car because twin turbo V6s just have a very different character overall than these naturally aspirated V8s. And believe it or not, I am actually not anti-turbo. I was actually the very first person to buy a 2.7 liter EcoBoost V6 F150 back in 2015 when I was living in Los Angeles, and I loved that engine and that truck. I think the thing with Lexus and with the GX and LX specifically moving to that engine is, again, these cars are not meant to be prodigious power makers. They're not meant to be race trucks the way that a Ford Raptor or even you know a super sport f-150 high output f-150 is it's a very different kind of car and so I think by changing over from a naturally aspirated v8 to a v6 it's going to greatly change the character of these trucks this is truly your last chance to get old school lexus limousine luxury in a car that you can buy brand new from a dealer today in 2023 and once they're gone just like the v6 rx they will be gone so you absolutely should buy one of these gx's while you still have the chance to all right, guys, here we are back in the driveway for likes number two and three. My second thing that I really, really like about this GX is the fact that we have hard buttons for climate. Now, as you may know, if you've been with me here on the channel, before we had this GX, we had a 2023 Lexus NX, and that NX had the new infotainment system, the same that we find in the new uh, RX, the new RZ, and will be coming to the 2024 Lexus GX as well. And the thing that I really, really didn't care for and honestly never really got used to even over six months of ownership with that NX was the fact 
that all my climate controls, so all the buttons and the functions and features that I need to be able to control the climate and HVAC system in the car were entirely on screen. And so I was constantly pressing the wrong thing, getting all kinds of you know inputs that I didn't want. It was just a mess. And so I really just, again, love that Lexus stayed with, even through the 2022 refresh where they redid the center stack. I love that we have physical buttons for climate, the little toggles for the temperature. It's just great. I don't know why anyone needs anything different than this, but this works great and I love that we have it in the GX. All right, moving on now to my third leg and believe it or not, it's actually the trackpad. Now, when we bought this car, I thought to myself, okay, cool, it's got the old school Lexus trackpad and it kind of sucks, but whatever, because I've got a full touchscreen. I don't even really need to use the trackpad. But over three months of driving, I have come to absolutely love having the trackpad, and here's why. So this is, I'm going to move now into what I consider to be a very comfortable driving position for me in this vehicle. Now, I'm short. I'm about 5'5", five, 5'6", five, five, so I'm not the tallest person out there. The problem that I have with the touchscreen in pretty much every car out there is the fact that when I'm seated comfortably in a seating position that works for me like this, I can't reach that, okay? <laughs> like, not happening. My arms are just not long enough to reach the touch screen. But what I can do is I can rest my arm very comfortably on the center armrest here, lay my hand, again, very ergonomically friendly, in a very ergonomically friendly way, on the trackpad. And now, with just moving my fingers, I can control anything here on this trackpad. So I can... You know, if I turn the AC on, for example, I can start to turn the temperature up. I can turn the temperature down. I can control my media here. I can do anything I need to do within this infotainment system with a touch of my finger. It is so nice to be able to be to maintain a comfortable seating position and just rest my hand here and use the trackpad. All right, next up for my fourth leg, we are actually outside of the car because the thing that I love here is the fact that this GX is painted all the way down to the ground, meaning we don't have any unpainted, unfinished black plastic body cladding the way that we do on every SUV out there, both luxury and non-luxury. We're even starting to see that proliferate in cars, so sedans and hatchbacks. Our Prius, for example, has some of that unpainted plastic around the wheel arches. And I just think that it makes a car look so cheap, especially when you start to see it on things like the Mercedes GLE and all of Lexus's new SUVs, the NX, the RX, and it's in spades on the brand new 2024 GX. It looks terrible. This GX, on the other hand, again, we have fully painted body panels all the way down to the running boards. And something to note here as well is that not only do we have body paint all the way down to the ground, but this is something Lexus used to do with all their SUVs that they stopped doing in recent years. But this whole design, all the way down to the running boards, we have painted and sculpted bodywork. So even though Lexus gave you a running board for the practicality of getting into such a big vehicle, even down here, this bodywork here is sculpted to fit the lines and the shapes of this body that's on the GX. And all the way down under here, where my hand is, is fully painted. So what that creates is, in totality, a much more elegant, much more sophisticated, and much more luxurious looking vehicle, in my opinion, than we get on, for example, that new 2024 GX, where Lexus didn't take any and didn't put any effort into sculpting bodywork to fit around the running boards, and the running boards on the 2024 look like any other truck, any other Toyota truck out there. They look like they were just bolted on after the fact, which they probably were. I much prefer the fully painted look of this GX, and it's one of the big reasons, especially with the detailing around the running board, why I will not be buying that 2024 Lexus GX. All right, moving on now to my fifth like, and for this I actually have to bring out some props that I will show you here in a second, but my fifth like is that we have a CD player in this Lexus GX. And it's not the fact that we have a CD player and that it's in here, but the fact that we have the CD player in tandem with this incredible, absolutely astounding Mark Levinson sound system. Now, the reason that the CD part is so important in that whole story, though, 
is because CDs give you the highest quality audio of any audio source out there. And because I am no spring chicken, I actually still have CDs from my childhood and my youth. Uh, this one, I think, the Cardigans Gran Turismo is from like 1998. This is Sugar Cult from like 2006, and I cannot even tell you how amazing all of these CDs sound coming through the Mark Levinson sound system. Now, the reason that that, is, that, that makes such a difference is because on when you're playing either a CD, and this one, you can tell how old this one is because it's all cracked up, the cases, um, or we are using audio off of a flash drive, which I have also done, uh, put some of my favorite music on a flash drive. It is doing all of the sound processing. And when it does all of the sound processing, it can decide how to balance the sound for the speakers and the overall acoustics of the car. And that's when you get the best, the 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 most complete and the richest and the fullest sound, in my opinion. So fifth like I love that we have a CD player and I love that we can use that CD player to again get the full benefit of the Mark Levinson sound system but all right last but not least my sixth and final like about the GX is believe it or not the barn door now this is I know one of the biggest points of contention with this truck overall and I've heard from some of you that have even said I passed on the GX entirely because of this door and I do fully understand that if you're a parent that's constantly juggling your life in your arms and you've got stuff and kids and all that kind of thing having a power lift gate is infinitely useful and more practical than having a manual opening door. But the thing about it is, what I really want to convey to you here in this video is that this barn door is way more usable than it seems like it is in theory and on paper. Now, this is where I park the car every day, all day, every night. This is my parking space in our garage. And as you can see, I've even got a bike behind the car. This is my bike. And the thing about it is, on paper, it seems like you'd need to have 25 feet of clearance to make this door usable and to be able to make it, you know, allow it to open and work for you. But the thing that I really like about this barn door is you don't have to have it open all the way to have a lot of access to your things. So even just cracked open like this, I can still fit, okay, all the way inside here. I can grab anything and reach anything, even in that furthest corner of the cargo area. And I can as well throw anything I might want to put into the car through this slot. So for me and for our life and the way that our current garage is situated, I find this to be really, really usable and I've actually really come to love it. So there you have it, six things to love about the 2023 Lexus GX, and to be honest with you, there are so many other littler things that didn't make this list that I've fallen head over heels in love with in terms of this Lexus GX. For example, my wooden steering wheel. I love my wooden steering wheel, and I would not give this thing up for the world. I love the Grace Appel wood that we have in here. I love all the finishings and the beautiful kind of soft uh, silver plastics and just so much to love about this car and it is truly again like i've said your last chance to get old school lexus luxury in a car that you can buy brand new today but with all that said my videos i always try to give you the good and the bad in equal amounts so let's move on to my dislikes and i do have six things that i dislike about this 2023 lexus gx all right guys here you join me at the gas station for my first dislike about the lexus gx which is of course the fuel economy of this great big gas guzzling truck environmentalists close your ears as i tell you that the best i have been able to do in this gx in mixed driving is about 14 to 15 mpg which is just by any standard here in 2023 not great on top of that the gx of course takes premium fuel which here where i live in texas is three dollars and fifty cents that's what we're paying right now but if you're any of my uh, west coast viewers your cost for premium is i've heard about six dollars to seven dollars a gallon and that makes a significant difference here where i live at that three dollars and fifty cents our gas is about seventy dollars for a full tank but in California, that could be as high as $130 to $150 a tank, depending on how much you're putting in. So if this is going to be your everyday driver, your one and only, it is absolutely worth considering how much you're going to be paying for fuel at the pump in your 2023 Lexus GX. 
That said, I do want to mention that the 2024 GX with that twin turbo 3.4 liter V6 doesn't do that much better. It actually only does one mile to the gallon better on average than this V8. So in terms of 23 to 24, you're actually not losing anything in terms of fuel economy between the 3.4 the 3 twin turbo and the 4.6 liter V8. All right, moving on now to my second dislike, and that is that for 2023, in terms of the grades of this vehicle, the luxury grade is an all or nothing kind of deal, and I absolutely do not like that. Now, if you watched my original intro video, you might know that we have the vehicle, the GX that we have is a premium plus, and that was a very specific decision that we made to buy the premium plus and not the luxury, and it didn't have to do with money. The reason that we chose to buy the premium plus plus was that I did not want air suspension, which can cause problems down the line later on in life, and I didn't care for the ride that you got with the adaptive variable suspension. I've said this before, and some people have disagreed with me, and that's totally fine. You do you, and you buy what you like, but for me, the adaptive variable suspension always created a ride that felt a little bit artificial. And what I mean by that is in sport mode, I felt like it was overly stiff and overly kind of jittery because that's the feeling that they were trying to go to with that setting in the adaptive damper system. And then in comfort mode, I felt like it was way too wallowy and kind of floaty and I get that this is a full-size luxury SUV, it's body on frame, so there is a certain amount of that that people may want from this GX, but I really, I just didn't care for any of the settings in that system, and I feel like, or felt like, and I still do feel like, with this Premium Plus GX, the ride is really authentic. So it is a little bit floaty and a little bit disconnected from the road just by virtue of being a body on frame SUV, but it's connected enough where I still feel like I know exactly what all the wheels are doing. I know exactly what the powertrain and the transmission is doing. I really like the ride quality and the feeling on the road that we get with the Premium Plus that doesn't have air suspension and doesn't have the adaptive dampers. With that said, I would really have liked, and the reason I was kind of hemming and hawing before we bought this car was, I did really want the semi aniline leather interior because I felt like Again, this is old school Lexus. It's an old school limousine. I wanted that really soft and supple semi-aniline leather. However, when it came down to, again, which one did we really want and what did we really care about, it the decision was made that we would get the the uh, new Lux here instead of the semi-aniline leather because I just didn't want to live with all the other stuff that comes on the limited or the luxury on a daily basis. And I wish that you didn't have to choose. I wish there was either a grade between the premium plus and the luxury or a package or something that I could have added to get the leather interior without getting all the other suspension and air airbag type things uh, on the luxury. So take that as you will. All right, moving on now to dislike number three, and that is that the TSS or LSSP, which is Toyota Safety Sense or Lexus Safety Sense, respectively, plus system that we have here in this GX is a joke. Now, TSSP or LSSP is the very first generation ever of Toyota's driver assistant systems. It came out in 2015, which doesn't sound like it was all that long ago, but in terms of car technology and the advances we've made, in the last eight or so years since then, this system is horribly out of date compared to other cars on the market at any price. So for example, our 2023 Prius is a base model and has just worlds better driver assistance technology than this GX does. Specifically, the two things that really, they don't bother me because I don't, I don't ever rely on these systems, but I wish I had a little bit better technology in this car are the fact that our adaptive cruise control system, because it's that TSSP, the old, old, old system, it is only able to be used above 32 miles an hour. Now for me, that is actually where I don't want to use it. I like to use adaptive cruise control in stop and go traffic because I feel like it takes some of the fatiguing nature of just crawling along in traffic um, away from you because the car is doing it. At higher speeds, at highway driving, I actually like to drive my own car. So for me, I can r truly count the number of times I've used adaptive cruise control here on this GX on one hand. And it's probably really on like two fingers. 
it just doesn't work as well as the newer 3.0 and even 2.5 systems that we have on the Prius and RAV4 Prime. The other thing that the that really makes this system that shows its age is the fact that none of the technology in this car is active. And what I mean by that is, for example, in the Prius and even in the RAV4 Prime, which have 3.0 and 2.5 respectively, they both have really great lane trace assist technology. So the car will actually very nicely and in a very nuanced manner, either keep the car in the center of the lane when adaptive cruise control is working, and even when it's not, it'll steer you gently if you get too close to the lane markings on either side. Now, in the TSSP system, which we have in here as well as is in the Forerunner, we don't have any kind of active technology. So you'll get a vibration here on the steering wheel if you start to, you know, get too close and kiss the line. But it's not going to stop you from steering over from the car from veering over into that next lane. And the same thing is true with the blind spot control. And of course, we don't have any kind of rear automatic braking. So I know a lot of people will say, I'm a great driver and I don't need that bullshit. And, blah, 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 blah. and I get that because most of us are better drivers and we don't, strictly speaking, need these systems. But things like rear automatic braking and some of the more active safety tech, I think is really valuable, especially if you have kids that are running around the car and things like that. So it is something to consider with this GX if you want the more updated and modern uh, driver assist technology, you're not going to find it here. And if that's a big part of what you're looking for in a luxury vehicle, where you'd expect to have the latest and greatest technology, not happening here and something you really have to be aware of going into the purchase. Alright guys, here we are back out on the road for dislike number four, and that is that this GX, although it's got a great big V8, can still sometimes be something of a blunderbuss. And this is going to be specifically evident to any of you out there who may have something else that is either partially or fully electrified in the garage. When you have something electrified, hybrid, plug-in hybrid, or full EV, you get used to that instant power and that instant kick off the line that you get from an electrified vehicle. With the GX, on the other hand, because it is still an ICE vehicle, it's still, and it's not a naturally aspirated ICE vehicle at that, when you're getting up to speed like we are here on this tollway on-ramp right now, and you're really trying to wring the power out of it, it can be a little bit slow. And actually, when you look at the numbers on paper, my new 2023 Prius is actually faster than this GX, both zero to 60 and through the quarter mile, which you might find surprising because, you know, the Prius has half as many cylinders. It has considerably less horsepower and torque than this GX. And the engine displacement is also half the size of this 4.6 liter V8. And so, as nice as the drive is in this GX, it does sometimes start to feel a little bit slow. And as city driving and in parking lots and in places where you have to make really tight maneuvers that the Tahoe-like handling of the GX really comes through. Okay, and it is exactly situations like this where you really start to feel the heft and the mass and the weight of the GX. So we're pulling in here to go to the Starbucks. It's right over there because I need my coffee. And it's in tight kind of parking lots and just places where you really want to be able to thread your way through really easily and really quickly. This truck doesn't do anything quickly and it doesn't really do all that much easily. So in this kind of parking lot type situation where I could very easily just you know, I have light steering and quick response in the Prius. In this car, you are really weighed down by the heft and weight and mass of the GX. It's not a bad thing, and some people are really gonna like it, but when you really step on the gas to get this car going, you get a very surgy kind of response if you do it too quickly like that. Uh, on the other hand, if you don't do that, you end up with, again, a very muted, very slow kind of response from the engine and throttle and steering and everything else in this truck. All right, next up for my fifth and second to last dislike, let's talk about all the incandescent bulbs around this car. Now, it is, of course, important to remember that this GX came out in 2009. The Land Cruiser Prado, which it's based on, came out in 2008. And so the development of both trucks was happening many years before that. And at the time, LEDs were still something of a rarity in automotive. 
So we had automakers playing with things like LED taillights, like we find here on the GX, but anything beyond that with being LED was still a number of years away. So when this car came to market, it had HID headlights and halogens, and it didn't have LEDs. Likewise, a lot of the fixtures that are original back from 2009, like these taillight housings, are going to have, of course, a number of incandescent elements to them. Now here I will say, Lexus has done a really good job keeping the updates coming to the GX. So for example, the LED headlights on this car are absolutely beautiful and those were updated in 2020 to the triple beam projector lens headlights. Likewise, on the front of this car we also have LED fog lights and actually even these license plate lights here are LEDs and you can tell that by how much whiter these lights are here than the reverse lights down there. So overall, the lights that you care about on this GX are LEDs. It's just the ancillary ones that you're using every now and again, like turn signals and reverse lights, where you are going to have a halogen element. Now, I will say that I actually really like in our particular configuration that we have incandescent lighting on the inside of the GX. As you've seen throughout the video, we have the beautiful Ecru interior, which is, again, a very light beige, almost a creamy white kind of color. That is really well offset by the softer and warmer light that you get from incandescent lights, the way that you just can't really get with LEDs, which are typically cooler and a lot sharper. So what that means for the interior, whether you're driving the car at night or whether you're in a dark garage like we are now, when the interior lights light up the cabin of this car, it's the most beautiful glow and it's soft light and it's warm light and it just makes the inside of ecru colored gx's look so good and so warm and so inviting with that said of course i don't think that these incandescent lights would look nearly as good in a black colored interior or with the rioja red i think there you might want to upfit or retrofit led bulbs into the interior of the vehicle but for us I actually don't mind the interior lights being incandescent because of the way that it looks and the ambiance that you get in this car all right, and finally, I've saved the best and most controversial for last. My last dislike in this video is actually not to do with this car, but to do with the brand new GX, the 2024 GX. Yes, I am breaking all my rules, and I'm making that my last dislike, because I... I just really dislike the new GX. There are so many things about my GX that I, again, absolutely love. And when I look at that new 2024 GX, I just don't feel like it's the true successor to this, to this GX. All the things we've talked about in this video to this point, the beautiful drive and refinement and smoothness from the V8 under the hood, that's gone because of the 3.4 liter twin turbo V6. The body side, you know, painted down to the ground and the body molding around the, the running boards, all the luxury touches that I feel like make this Lexus GX 460 so special and so premium and so much more elevated over a Toyota vehicle. I don't see any of that in the new GX. And the thing about it is, okay, it would even be okay if we weren't getting the Land Cruiser alongside it. I really feel like, you know, Toyota's decision to bring the Land Cruiser to market and have them side by side for the American public to, you know, choose between highlights the fact that they didn't push the Lexus as far as I feel like they really needed to, to differentiate it enough to justify the sky-high pricing that we know that they will be asking for it. Pricing has not been released at this time. I believe it's going to start around $70,000, probably go up to maybe eighty five dollars or maybe even ninety dollars from there. That's a lot of money to be asking for really what is a Land Cruiser 150 Prado with just a, a bigger engine under the hood. I mean, that really truly does seem like the only differentiation between the new Land Cruiser and the GX is the fact that the Land Cruiser has a turbo hybrid four and the uh, GX has the twin turbo V6. So again, if you're looking for old school Lexus luxury, you're looking for the finest things in life, beautiful leather, beautiful interior finishing, bodywork that's painted down to the ground, the gray sapel wood, real genuine wood trim like we have in this car, the cashmere style kind of headliner that we've gotten here, 
There are just so many things that make this car so special because it is a product of a time long past. So there are six likes and six dislikes about the 2023 Lexus GX. As I've told so many of you in the comments, just buy it. <laughs> just, you know, if, if it's within your price range and you can afford to buy a 2023 Lexus GX, which by the way, okay, this car, our, our GX Premium Plus was only about 64.5, I believe is what we, the MSRP. It really is kind of a bargain in today's market. And I would just, I would just buy one. Just do it. <laughs> And you know what? The thing is, too, these will hold their value because of that V8, because everything we talked about here, all the things that make this car so special. If you decide in the next couple of, you know, two, three years that you want to flip this, you know, your 23 GX for a 24 GX, you'll be able to do that without taking too big of a hit financially, if any. So there really isn't a big downside and a big reason not to buy one of these, again, if it's within your price range and your budget. So I hope this answered all the questions that you all may have had about the uh, 2023 GX. I really appreciate you watching. If there's anything more that you'd like to know, you have two options. Leave them down in the comments. Or, as you may know if you've watched my recent videos, I have an email that you can email me at. I have gotten so many emails from you guys, and I love getting emails. It just makes my day that so many of you think to reach out and want to you know further discuss all of the things that we love about toyota and lexus so thank you guys so much for watching i'm gonna leave it here have a great one happy november and happy thanksgiving um i'm not sure my next video is going to be a two-year in review on our rav4 prime because we are coming up on two years with that amazing little plug-in hybrid crossover if that doesn't go live before thanksgiving Happy Thanksgiving. I am so thankful for all of you, for this channel, for the space that you have, we have created all together. I'll see you soon. Have a great one and take care.